perhaps it's a bit nostalgic. Sometimes if I didn't want to go to the movie, I was I was also known to ride my bike up here and just grab some popcorn and, and ride back because the popcorn is that iconic. Maybe even a bit Norman Rockwell Americana. The movie playing on the marquee, the iconic ticket window, the smell of popcorn, and of course, that person you were with. I think I had my first date here when I was 16, and I remember the movie was The Sound of Music. The film on the screen was part of it, to be sure. My husband and I have been married almost 50 years. We went to the drive-in first, and then once we got married and we uh, had young kids, we came to the Varsity Theater. As did thousands over the years while the Varsity was in operation. But time and progress sometimes gets in the way of that whole once was mentality. This is way before, you know, all these multi screen movie theaters that pop up at the malls and all these other places. This was a historical part of the fabric of, you know, the West Side and, and specifically the Drake neighborhood. But with those multiplex theaters with large seats and surround sound, why would an old theater from the early 1900s even be relevant anymore? as a recognized historic landmark, so that was really one of the first things we wanted to do is preserve a lot of those historic elements here. What does that preservation look like? What well, fits the Drake neighborhood. It's got a coolness <laughs> that fits our neighborhood. And it turns out it's got a future generation of talent built right in. The fact that we can support and uplift our local talent, that is just amazing. And use film to educate to tell stories and to bring the community together, it's, it's a dream come true. Maybe Norman Rockwell was correct. The secret to so many artists living so long is that every painting is a new adventure. Introducing that new adventure, reintroducing the varsity. So today we are digging the footing for the elevator. Mostly all hand dug, just due to we can't get any machines in. Working on some of the, finishing up the demo, most of the demo. And then moving into the auditorium. Before anyone could reconstruct an old movie theater, it's important to remember that this wasn't built as a movie theater at all. Nick Doyle and his crew from Newman Brothers Construction are the first to point out this concrete slope toward the back end of the building, that's not for a theater. This was once, back in 1917, a Coca-Cola bottling distribution center. The building that we're standing in did serve as the Coca-Cola bottling facility for the, the Des Moines area. Uh, so where we're standing in the auditorium actually was the space where they actually bottled a uh, Coca-Cola. Over time, the Coca-Cola bottling plant moved to new headquarters and was replaced in 1938 by a theater. For years, it's been home to all kinds of rerun movies. Yes, yeah, some of the favorites that people, you know, saw and you probably will see it again here in the varsity is Casablanca, The Godfather, Dancing in the Rain. The old rerun movies in some of the art house films proved successful. In fact, it was one of the oldest art house theaters in the country until 2018 when the new owners retired and the building was once again, for lack of a better term, mothballed, likely to give way to a new development complex in a growing area. 
or maybe not. Well, yeah, we are uh, weeks, if not days, away from starting construction here. Obviously, we're in kind of already a, a seeming state of construction here. There's been a lot of work already done, um, just kind of, you know, exploring the building, figuring out um, what all they're going to need to do from a structural and mechanical standpoint and everything. Meet Ben Godar and the team at Des Moines Film. Des Moines Film, you know, we were founded in 2015, our nonprofit, and our, our mission was always broadly to grow the film culture in Des Moines. And so we've done that even before the Varsity opened. We've, you know, produced events, we've done things to support local filmmakers. But long term, our mission was always to operate our own full-time cinema. Lo and behold, with the closing of the Varsity in 2018, a possibility just so happened to, as they say in the film and award season business, present itself for your consideration. The Varsity closed uh, the last day of 2018, and Des Moines Film has been working diligently since then to make this project a reality. And it's changed over that time. You know, initially it was just reaching out to the Mahon family with, with mostly just an idea, saying like, hey, we have a vision for what this space can be. We have seen um, cinemas like this run by arts nonprofits in other communities. We know that this can work here. Will you trust us to implement that here? Well, it was interesting because Ben called and a couple of people that were on Ben's board knew me, knew I did some fundraising and said, we're trying to get this off the ground. Would you consider coming on board? And I said, I love the varsity. Of course I would. Ben, Pat, and the rest of the board knew restructuring a former Coca-Cola distribution center turned local but now closed theater would take a few, okay, more than a few community partners. What's exciting for me is continuing to build and build a team of people working on this. And we've been doing that for a while, but just continuing to kind of see that snowball build is, is, has been exciting for me and it continues to be exciting for me. There's a lot of people and a lot of resources, you know, coming together and making this happen. Ben is correct. There are a lot of community partners and it turns out passion in just the right places to make this happen. Well, it'll it'll bring the varsity back, which is incredibly important, but again, in bigger and better form, more vibrant form, more programming associated with it. It's gonna fit what we're doing with the neighborhood. And I mean, when I say we, I don't just mean Drake, I'm talking about Drake, Neighborhood Association, other entities that have moved in. It's got that coolness that I referenced a moment ago, and that fits the vibe of this place. It kind of sets the vibe of this place. That vibe Drake President Marty Martin is referring to is emblematic of people like Fabiola Schurmeister. I moved to Des Moines in the summer of 2014. I was born and raised in Mexico, but I did my uh, bachelor's degree in Puerto Rico. So I lived in Puerto Rico about seven years. My background is in telecommunications, so I have to cover TV, radio, and film. So yes, I'm very, very excited to be part of this uh, new opportunity for the Bar City Cinema, the community cinema. Many may not realize this, but it's true. Art house cinemas are burgeoning throughout the United States, providing a younger generation of filmmakers, cinematographers, and storytellers a place to hone their craft. When I moved here, I was kind of upset because I couldn't find places, uh, community theaters, community cinemas to really uplift our local talent. So this is gonna be a great opportunity for all the people out there that not only love films, but also for our youth, for our young people that it's in love with film and production. And the fact that Drake University and community partners are literally right next door, well, that seems like a no brainer to developers and supporters. Well, it fits a college campus, doesn't it? I mean, to have that kind of amenity nearby fits a college campus, particularly one like Drake. You know, we're a liberal arts university and the arts are incredibly important to us. We also attract students from all over the world. You know, 65, 70% of our students come from outside the state of Iowa. And you get normally 10 to 15 countries represented in an entering class. So they'll come and they'll see the varsity and they'll appreciate that that part of the world is here, that that is bringing parts of the world, various perspectives of the world to their experience of Drake University. We're gonna be 
uh, looking at films at this theater that are going to be completely different than what would go out maybe in the mainstream theaters. You'll see more student work here. You'll see more, you know, smaller films, uh, more European films. The idea is that this will serve as, as kind of an art house and also that it will be used by students as a way of studying film and cinematography and all that's involved in that. And perhaps most important, build a brand new history. Now that a need and a desire for a new varsity is identified, and just as important, funding secured, it's time for Ben and his team to get to work. I'm not really nervous. I'm excited, to be honest. We've spent so much time sort of in this uh, capital fundraising and kind of developer and construction phase of this project. A phase that wasn't made any easier right from the start. In fact, you would have already seen a movie here if it wasn't for, well, a global pandemic. Initially, our project was set to, to kick off fundraising in early 2020, and that created some big challenges from us because rightfully so, a lot of funding priorities change, whether that be for individuals, foundations, or grants. Even that wasn't enough to deter the team from getting to this day. So it's the middle of April now. Construction has been underway for a little while now. The space is really transformed. Tearing out old walls, demo of concrete, and uncovering a lot of lost history. We had an old historic photo from like the 50s. Well, when they kind of d uh, demoed the outer part of that wall, they found that window was still there in place. And it just so happens that's exactly where we're putting the new concession window. So basically that opening and everything was, was already there and kind of more you know beautiful than we, we realized it was gonna be. Saving so much history, it turns out, is quite an undertaking. I've had the great opportunity to spend um, nearly my entire life working with historic preservation in some way, shape, or form. The varsity translates directly to that as the, the preservation of this building really reopening the doors of really what the economic opportunity of, of the Dogtown area and the varsity cinema could be. Newman Brothers Construction is no stranger to historic renovations. It's a different game every project, new game, so it's fun to do the old and fun to do new. Yeah, so we're uh, right about the end of July right now, and a lot of progress has happened. And I think what's most exciting is that, uh, you know, whereas so much of the first part of the process was tearing out, now we're building back in.
After years of fundraising and after a year of construction, it's finally part of the community the Varsity envisioned. It's even better than what I expected. I can't believe how gorgeous it is. I think people are gonna be so impressed with everything that's been done here. I mean, everything from the seats to the, the side murals. I mean, it's just fabulous. And I'm just, I can't wait to see people's reactions to this. Sure, it'll be a new home for Art House Cinema, but in this neighborhood, in this location, it's so much more than a revitalized theater. It'll absolutely enhance the neighborhood, not only for students, but everybody who lives here and everybody who's just been waiting for independent films. I mean, they're so excited about it. Well, I almost cried because I knew what it was going to be. I saw the parts as they did it, but to see it actually done, this is a true movie theater. I never expected it to be this wonderful. I knew it was going to be great, but this is a dream come true for all of us that have been involved. A perfect place for art and culture right here in the Dogtown neighborhood. People that will go to the theater are gonna to wanna to stay either before or after a show and anything in between, I think. They're gonna to wanna to come to this neighborhood and really stay. As Norman Brockwell once said, common places never become tiresome. It is we who become tired when we cease to be curious and appreciative. Welcome back to the Varsity. Thank <laughs> you.